let's talk about Darren Waller, who took the game over. Darren Waller goes up to make the catch. This is some player emerging as the game's best. He's bigger and faster than everybody. Like, Darren Waller, you can't cover. They're going to be wild. They are, you know. He is moving at a little different speed in quickness than Kelsey or Kittle can move at. Only six tight ends in history have gone over 200 yards in a game. He seems to be on his way up. Life is really good now, but life wasn't always this good. Uh, yeah, there was a time in my life where I didn't want to look in the mirror. Uh, yeah, it's like you realize, like, man, you don't even want to look at yourself when you're brushing your teeth because what's there is not who you are. What's there is not pleasing in any way, you know. I mean, Percocet was always number one, like painkillers, smoking weed, Xanax, Coke, Adderall, codeine syrup, you name it. Like, if it gives you some kind of high, some kind of feeling. And so it's just, it's tough. You don't wanna, you don't wanna look at that. It's, it's, it's tough to look at. Everybody knows the Waller story by now. Injured in 2015, was suspended for the substance abuse violation for four games in 2016. Then the entire year in 2017, had issues with pills and drugs since he was 15 years old. Basically, he became addicted to drugs. I don't think I've ever shared this before, but uh, I remember in the first meeting, like a training camp, Coach Harbaugh, who was a coach at the time, still there, he was like, he's like, if you don't love football, just walk out and leave right now. He's like, if you don't love football, just walk out. And I was just like, I'm about to get walk out. Like, I do not, I don't love being here. I don't love playing. Like, just, I just don't. Like, maybe it'd just be better if I just got up and walked out. But I just sat there and just continued to go along with it. Baltimore, Darren, uh, very, Reserved, very isolated, very anxious, very afraid of what you would think. Also very reckless. I took the field riddled with anxiety and fear. There was no freedom or childlike joy in playing the game. I will get high in the morning. Most of my using came like right after practice ended. Like be the first one out as soon as the day. I didn't hang around with anybody. I didn't have any kind of friendships with guys on the team unless you were doing what I was doing. I was still using I wasn't going to stop. Like, uh, it was just me battling myself. I overdosed in my Jeep uh, in August 2017, August 11th. The day of the Ravens having the preseason game, that year I was suspended, so it was like, there was nobody from the Ravens was worried about where I was at that point in time. None of my friends or family like knew where I was at the time. Like, I was getting out of the car, and I was like, mm, I'm about to faint or throw up everywhere or something crazy is about to happen. And I'm like, nah, I'm not about to get, I'm not about to get out of the car. I'm just about to sit here for a while. And just was sitting there, it was just feeling crazy. And then it was just like somebody pulled the plug out from behind the TV. That was the low point, but also like that moment in time was what really transformed life for me. As a child or as a kid, Darren was, uh, he was a little shy. He really was. He, he wasn't all that outgoing. I think the football brought out, you know, something in him. When he tried to get around the cool kids, it was a little different. He wasn't black enough or white enough or cool enough. All those things kind of played a part. In the South, where I grew up, football is like religion. So if I was good at football, you know, you'd have to appreciate me. You had to respect me. It became such a people-pleasing tool or just a, a way for me to get you to like me. That became very exhausting because you can never really win that game if you're trying to go that route. And it started to become like part of my identity because competitive environments like locker rooms and friend groups with men, it's like everything's a competition. It's celebrated to drink somebody under the table so I could do that. I could, you know, 
snort something till the sun comes up and it's like, that's cool, it gave me some kind of identity. I could talk to him on the phone just for a few minutes and say, something's really not right. Felt like something was wrong with me. So I felt like I had to be bad, I felt like I had to be obnoxious and cause I felt like that was what all the cool kids were doing. I'm walking in the hallway, if I see you with a cast on, a sling on, be like, hey, I'll give you some money, I'll give you da da da, like, let me get some of that. You know, frat houses on campus in college. I'll go to the hood, I'll go I'll go anywhere to, to get it because it's what I want, it's what I need, so I'll do anything to get it. So, like, I, I can get drugs anywhere. See it happen to my son, something that I struggled with a, a lot, kept me up at night, things like that. And You know, I started with that, and every now and then, it, once every couple weeks, once a week, like I'm not giving this up. Overdosing scared the hell out of me because it was the first moment in my life where I couldn't figure a way out or use my intelligence to get out of this. I just think that was his rock bottom and he wound up realizing it's gotta be a better way than this. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you right. ever get on the football on. field again. That's what I told him. I don't care if it's gonna kill you. No, don't do it. But just get your stuff together. So you can, you know, just, just be all you can be. You got more in you than this. Once that light comes on and somebody wants that help, they go after it. But it takes action, right? Nobody's gonna give it to you. You gotta go and get it. Entered rehab. Day after my birthday, September 14th, 2017, I was finally able to see it as a positive, as an asset for me to put the rest of the world on hold and just go there and create the definition of the man that I want to be. It was like a switch came on. He was a totally different person. His mood, his energy was all positive, and it was about getting his plan, his structure. I was getting an idea of with the power of just being honest and open, what that can do for you and how good that feels. My spiritual awakening and my progress through this process comes from a higher power who is God to me. I could hear him saying like, you're not gonna be quiet about this. If you're gonna speak out on it, you're gonna be real about it. I've ran from conversations, ran from relationships, any kind of interaction, any kind of discomfort my whole life. I'm just walk straight towards it because that's produced more positive results than running from it ever has. I just got a job, I was working at Sprouts, and I was going to meetings, and you know, I felt like better about my life at that point than I ever did playing in the NFL prior to that. It, be, it became structured for him, but it also became a reality. Oh, this is how the normal people do it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he's discussing uh, vegetables with people. You yeah, know, like, as oh. he's, you know, stocking and stuff. But now, like, the way that I was trying to live in, a, in an honest manner, that's what meant more to me. So I was cool at that point with like, if I never play football again, you know, I feel like I could find my way through life and find a, a better way to live. I told him that I was just so amazed, I was so proud of how he had just turned it around. I wasn't focused on making a great comeback or anything like that, you know, I was just trying to, you know, figure things out every day. The league was shocked that he was reinstated. But we were not. It appeared back in camp looking like Mr. Atlas. Not only was he working and going to the meetings, he was working out like crazy. When I first got back to the team, I got cut and put on practice squad. Oh, I can be like, oh man, my ego, like, I played two years in the league, now I'm on the practice squad, like, this is, this is some bull, like, or, you know, using it as an opportunity to just continue to get better. And then when my opportunity presented itself, I didn't have to get ready, because I was ready. We're playing the Ravens, um pre-game warm-up, all our receivers were hurt. We're watching the Baltimore Ravens practice squad work out before the game. And our offensive coordinator, Greg Olson, says, who the hell is that guy? And I look up and I see this freak running 15 yards ahead of everybody. We claimed him on the airplane. He shows up two days later, he's our best player. And he's been our best player since. Caught in the back of the end zone by Waller for a touchdown. Jackpot, baby. Where's he been this season? The Raiders have found themselves in the gym. He is the best pickup I've ever had, and it's hands down. He's got gold jacket ability. 
There's no doubt about it. And their tight end, Darren Waller, looks like an NBA player. He's like 6'7", runs a 4'4". Four, four. I was watching him in practice. I'm like, he's going to be an animal. It's hard to be that big, strong, fast, and skilled all at the same time. Baltimore Darren and Las Vegas Darren are way different people. <laughs> he is a match of nightmare. And that Waller kid, he's a problem. Too big, too physical. He learns so fast. Every day was just, what are we gonna get good at today? He'll pass block Jason Pierre-Paul, and he'll do it like 13 times in a game. And also, he's tasked to have 130 yards and two touchdowns on 13 catches. He is overworked and underpaid, and he's making a lot of money. He should make more. We got a whole lot of money over here. Over here. Said I'd be rich in a year. Said I'd never ever get around here. I'm here. <laughs> Having Darren in the locker room has been unbelievable. My rookie year, he came to the rookies and, and talked to all of us about you know, his story and kind of just gave us a rundown of what he went through and things of that nature. And you know, me being a, a, somebody who's 16 months sober, at that time I was not sober. You know, hearing that, it was eye-opening for sure. We just had the anniversary of his four years of sobriety and we celebrated with him as a team. The players are all excited for him. They lean on him. We've had a couple other people in our building have some dark moments. He's been a great source of light for them. I appreciate him. I appreciate everything he, he brings to, to, to life and to our team. I've always had an addictive personality. I've always struggled with um, using and having Darren Waller in, in my locker room is like, it's, you know, that's, that's God, that's God right there. So if Darren can do it, I can do it. That just gave me, you know, strength. His story normally ends the other way. How many guys do you hear that turn it around? You just don't. And they'll keep helping people until the day is over. So, sorry. His, his story is pretty cool for me. So, uh, my wife always gives me crap because every time I start, you know, talking about him, sometimes I get a little choked up. It's like one of my brothers. So, I think the hardest thing is in football, you're institutionalized in a way like where you always got to be the tough guy. You show no weakness, like, it takes a real man, a strong person to go out publicly about you being an addict. He doesn't take it lightly, it's not lip service. He's competing to help people cure their addictions, and I love him for that. Las Vegas Darren has a vision for the person that he wants to become and the impact that he wants to leave on the community and just leave the world a better place than when he came in it. I love Las Vegas. I love the people that are in Las Vegas. I love what the city has done for me so far. There are a lot of times in my life where I didn't want to be around people just to be welcomed in the city and to be loved by people and by a community. It's an amazing feeling and I just want to continue to be present in that and just continue to consistently show up as myself. Uh, human beings make mistakes, but they're not defined by their mistakes. One action, one day doesn't define who a human being is, but it's how they progress into becoming someone that makes everyone around them better is what counts. And he has been the best, arguably the best tight end in the NFL so far this year. My name is Darren Waller. I'm a football player. I'm also a human being.